So I started off in, uh, I won a special election in January of 08. I had run in November of 07 and lost. And then a council member, Roger Lang, became Mayor Lang. Um, and then he had some time left on his seat. So in January of 08 is when I actually uh, officially was sworn in on Longmont City Council. So it's been a, you know, a, a, a nice time to be on council, a good run. I'm a, a little disappointed to be term limited, but I'm looking forward to having some free time. Well, my girls are eight, uh, nine. I almost said eight, eight. She just turned nine. My youngest is nine, and my oldest is twelve. So they have a lot of activities. Uh, my youngest is in robotics and soccer. My oldest plays uh, competition softball. So it, it's always been. When I first got on council, they were very young, didn't have a whole lot to do, and now that they're older, they have a lot of activity. So, just being, you know, having uh, more time to do things with them and uh, with my wife and just not having to worry about a Tuesday night meeting all the time. Mm. So she can have a regular dinner. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, she doesn't know what she's going to do with me on Tuesday night. So uh, she says she may go out and, ha uh, go out and have a, uh, a meeting or go out with some friends and go out and have you know, dinner or something mm -hmm. and leave me at home. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't know what she's going to do with me. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's, um, it, it's, I'm looking forward to having... Uh, some time to being able to schedule vacations or uh, family events that don't conflict with not only a Tuesday night meeting but any boards and commissions that you know I would serve on. You know, I, I don't know. Um, I would consider you know, there, there are three bond me uh, three measures that are on the ballot right now. Um, two of them I, I would definitely uh, be in support of regarding the. Windy Gap issue and um, and the public safety tax. If issues came out like that that I thought was in the best interest of the city, I might engage in that. I have pretty much tried to stay out of this current election. Um, you never know. The, the, the door's always up. I never shut a door, so you never know. I think all members of council at that time, um, well, most of them, uh, did a uh, a yeoman's job uh, uh, at that time. The accomplishments, I would say, um, getting Nextlight, having Nextlight finally implemented within the city, it's a great thing not only for as a resident of Longmont, but uh, but as a council member and for the community, I think it's a great asset that we have. Um, getting the Village of the Peaks uh, finally online, uh, being as shrewd negotiators that the council and members of staff were to get that uh, get that finished. And, and yeah, you're right. The, the flood, um, you know, for several days, um, you know, the city of Longmont was cut in half. But uh, to be able to bounce back um, four years later, and, and being a, in a relatively really good position to, and working on and continuing to work on mitigating any flood activities that may come in the future. So. Being able to bounce back uh, from the flood has been fantastic. You know, getting uh, Village of the Peaks online. Oh, you know, I, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. I have people um, and friends who live outside the city and have said, you know, tell me about Nextlight. I, I keep reading about Nextlight. Longmont has the fastest internet in the United States and maybe the third in the world. You know, so how much does it cost? Does it cost you a couple hundred dollars? No, $50 a month. And then I have the phone service, uh, you know, what? it's $20 a month. Um, but to have that time, to have the vision that uh, the Platte River Power Authority and the council at the time to put the fiber backbone around the city uh, 15, 16, 17 years ago, uh, to have that foresight that eventually maybe the city would be able to use that uh, for, for internet service throughout the city was very, um, uh, um, a very good vision and then having the residents trust and having a good plan uh, having the residents trust the city but also us having a very good plan to implement that so residents can take advantage of uh, um, a fifty dollar gig to your house internet system so I'm, I'm, it's one of the I use it every day so at my home and in my business and you know being able to stream TV or stream movies it's it's fantastic and, and people ask me in fact I had one uh, one friend of mine who is uh, uh, very close to uh, uh, an incumbent provider 
um, he, he hadn't, he'd, he'd been, he came to the house and said, hey, can I get on your Wi-Fi? So I got him on his iPhone and he goes, wow, this is really fast. So, you know, it, it, it's take, it takes people by surprise, but, uh, um, but when they do, you know, I, have, I really haven't heard too many complaints about Nextline. You know, it, it's, um, I, I've said from time and time again that uh, the decisions that the current council and the next council will, will deal with the same, same thing I'm about to say. The current council, whenever, whoever is on it, when it comes to pass, will deal with the decisions and indecisions of previous councils. So Twin Peaks Mall, you know, probably should have been redeveloped, you know, 15, 20 years ago. But um, there were members of council um, when I first got on that wanted it done today. And we need to do it now. But the, sometimes being ex very quick is not the best way to go about you know, any infrastructure or any plan development or what have you. But uh, getting the right partner, uh, getting to know them, and also being very, um, you know, uh, negotiating hard with that developer to get the best deal for the city. Um, I'm, it's, it's a fantastic project. Like most folks would like to see a little bit more uh, commercial retail of clothing and things of that nature. So with that I would just let people know if you buy online you're hurting long run. So shop and shop local so eventually we can get those places and those businesses here. But with the adage of um, the orchard and Sentara, you know, not developing not developing that mall very early on hurt Longmont. But now that we have a very good product, you know, it's I look forward to seeing it grow and you know, be a bit a little bit bigger sales tax generator. Mm -hmm. Well, and I'm a big guy, so I mean, I, I gotta I gotta try on a shirt because it's you know I, I want to be comfortable. You know, buying things online is convenient. Uh, you know, we have agreements with uh, Amazon for sales tax and th you know like that. But being able to you know to touch something and, and seeing that you know uh, an iPhone or what have you or clothing and shoes, you know, um, having a brick and mortar place is is key to keeping at least the community together as well. <laughs> I, I've enjoyed my time with Mayor Coombs. Um, Dennis and I knew each other. Um, we were in the same Rotary Club at one time. Um, but I didn't know him very well. When, when Dennis uh, became mayor, um, you know, it, 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 you're, you're trying to, you know, uh, feel each other out to see, okay, I know Dennis can be, is very, uh, uh, very uh, concerned about environmental issues, and, and as we all should be, um, but also trying to find those things that we agree on and, and work to build. I've always been one that I won't shut people out because I disagree with them, because eventually later on there's some some topic that we can work on together that um, to make the city better. So we may disagree on this one thing, but. Um, I'll take composting for example. You know, Mayor Coombs is very excited about composting, and I know that's one of his accomplishments. That's one of his things that he's very excited about during his his term as mayor, as getting it implemented in the city. But we worked together um, to make it a, a good compromise for all the residents of Longmont. It's not mandatory. It's voluntary. It's a relatively inexpensive. Um, um, uh, expenditure for residents if they want to do that, but they can also save money by going to a smaller container. And I, you know, I attribute that to a lot of uh, uh, Mayor Coombs' leadership on that. But also having having that open mind, and I think that's where he and I got along very well, is that we were both open to each other's suggestions. We may have voted differently, but it was never um, confrontational. So I really appreciate, appreciated that with Mayor Coons. You know, <laughs> I'm going to uh, miss the staff. Um, they have made uh, my time on council very, very easy. They, we have great professional staff. Um, uh, they do a very hard job. Um, they, they work individually. They work very hard. But collectively, they do a fantastic job for this community. Um, I think 
most residents, you know, it's they really don't have, may, may not have interaction with members of staff all that often unless it's you get pulled over by a police officer or your house is on fire or going to the library. You know, it, it's sometimes it's always a negative um, uh, chance that you meet a member of staff. But if they were, if you ever come in and need, need a permit from the clerk's office or go to the library or go to the develop. Uh, uh, um, the, the planning, uh, parks and rec, you'll find that the staff is more than willing to uh, uh, you know, try to accommodate you as best they possibly can and give you the best customer service that they, uh, they can provide. But uh, no, it's, been an, it's been an honor, it's been a pleasure to serve on city council. It's been, uh, uh, you know, it's one thing that uh, I'll miss a little bit, but uh, being a council member has never defined me. Um, in fact, I've always talked to members of staff to say that, um, you know, when you send me an email or call me on the phone, it's Gabe. You know, at a meeting, I understand Council Member Santos, you know, you know, when it's events, Council Member Santos. But, you know, I get up and get my kids off to school and eat breakfast and have to wash clothes and do all the stuff like everybody else. You know, I don't, I don't live away and have to fly into me. I live in this community. So, um, but being a council member is... Uh, has been a, a privilege, it's been an honor, but uh, you know now I, I will be Sylvia's dad, and Isabel's dad, and Vicky's husband. You know uh, th those those are the those are the most important titles to me. <laughs> Luckily, they know. Um, so when my first ran, when I first ran, my oldest was just about one and a half, almost two, and then later on, um, a couple years later, my second. Our second daughter came, uh, was born. In fact, I had to leave a, a meeting with RTD because my wife was in labor, and I went to the hospital. And it was just one of those funny moments during a council meeting that I have to leave because my wife's giving birth. Um, my wife's always been very supportive. Um, uh, under, always understood that Tuesday nights, she knows where she can find me at 7 o'clock, between 7 and 11. Um, always you know, giving me advice. Um, what to say, sometimes what not to say. But it's, it's funny, um, my daughters think that being a council member is my only job, <laughs> which, you know, that's the one thing they, they always hear. But, you know, now I get to, uh, again, spend more time. Not that I've been a, an absent father, but, you know, I, I, I want to do more things w with them. I work from home, so when they get home from school, I'm there. I can take them to soft, uh, softball practice or soccer practice. Um, they know I love them very much, and they've been great supporters. My daughters are a little upset that I didn't run for mayor, but um, almost 10 years is kind of a long time, so, you know, it's time for a break.